Yo, what's Yo, good, bro. baby? What up, Rich? What's the word? What's Man, good, you bro? you somewhere where it's still kind of light out. You stay, you here? Are we? Is it? Are we still? What time is it? I guess I'm tripping, bro. I'm like, Seven. man, he off though somewhere else. I'm it's seeing light in the background. Right? I'm so used to sitting in this dude's basement. I know. No, what's up know. with you, money? Man, I'm good. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Hey, man, we really appreciate you you taking this on, Brody, because uh, I don't know if people know, but you. You definitely are a uh, Springfield legend around here, bro, when it comes to the hoop side. Man, I appreciate that, man. You know, Steve, that's family, man. We go back as long as I can back, remember. Man. Back, back. So let let's let's start it there then, bro. Cause I'm I'm hearing you got a uh y'all went on a on a little state run. Is that what I hear? <laughs> We were just hey, talking about this shit, man. I knew, I knew he was going to talk about that one, man. That was an unbelievable experience, man. I think, you know, the thing that separated us in middle school, man, and I tell a lot of people about this, even my guys that I coach now, is, man, lunchtime separated us. And I, I say that because, you know, you got some guys in their jeans, some guys in their khakis. Everybody had their little plaid button down, whatever, little polo, whatever. <laughs> But at lunchtime, we was hoping. It was time. Full blown 21, two, two man 21, <laughs> yeah. whatever we whatever we was playing that day. I mean, we was hoping, man. And we we leaving lunch in probably 20, 30 minute period. We sweating bullets going back to class. <laughs> as, soon as, they come in, as soon as they come in that gym, like, hey, y'all got to go back to class, man. We running in the bathroom, grabbing paper towels, wiping off. But you know, we still sweating. We go, we go in that classroom. Our teachers looking at us like we crazy. Yeah. <laughs> do you? So do y'all? Do y'all remember who that squad was? Who was on the squad the year y'all went to state when you was in middle school? Man, we had a lot of athletes. Man, man. we had a lot of athletes. It was me, Steve, uh, Adam Mola, 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 uh, Danny Madiri, Danny Madiri, a uh, kid named Will. Will transferred in from Chicago. Yep. Uh, he played for us. Was, Tony, was, Tony, was Tony Smith on that team? To, Tony, Tony was, was on. Yeah. Okay. 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 He, they they talking about when uh, in seventh grade when we went up and did eighth. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So that team, uh, Tony Smith was on that team. Nico yeah. Scott was on that team. Uh, Y'all had Nico Scott, too. Eric Connor. Eric. <laughs> <laughs> we was we was loaded. Y'all was some bullies, man. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> I can remember smart, going to y'all man. games and seeing you dunk, bro, and get technicals and stuff. And we was, you know, I'll be sitting in the crowd with Steve's family. Like, I'm like, who is this grown dude out here playing with Steve, man? Like, this is crazy. Like, we was happy. You know, you could do a left hand layup. When I was at Franklin, you know, oh, people you thought you was good. Or grab the net. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that was the thing. Grab even touching the rim is where we was at with it. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. That's where all the talent was at, man. All the talent was at Franklin. Then, then Grant, then, then it was us. You know, you had them outsiders over at Washington, man. But we just gritted it out. We was, you know, we, I thought we was tougher than a lot of those guys. You look at those that's... guys roster, though, 1 through 12. And man, they were loaded, especially Franklin. Yeah. But y'all did, did not y'all won state, right? Yeah. yeah. The only team that beat us was Quincy, and we beat them in the champion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you hey. So remember the game before? I don't remember who we was playing. We was blowing them out though. We all kept trying to dunk in the game. So I got I got suspended <laughs> for that game. <laughs> I remember. Because you can't get them damn technicals. <laughs> <laughs> I got ejected the game before they yep. ain't playing that game. And bro, then I want everybody to understand this. How old was you when this happened? Uh, we was in eighth grade. Eighth man. grade, we bro. Eighth grade, man. That's that's hard eighth to wrap your mind around eighth grade. That's crazy. I can remember going to Franklin though, and I remember Marcus Davis used to dunk all the yeah. time. He would get technicals yeah. at all the games. Yeah. He could never play in any of the games. He was yeah, taller man. than he was everybody. Big, man, he was like six nine in eighth grade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he grew quick. Yeah. He grew quick. So when you when you when we, okay, so after after middle school you go to high school, what I wanna know is when you get to Lanfear, freshman year, who is the man on the campus at that time? It was it was crazy. Um it was crazy because when we was in eighth grade, Lanfear had won like I don't even know, like three, four games. Like they didn't win no games. But they had some good young talent. Like, 
Torres Granderson. Uh, he was good. So he was a senior coming into my freshman year. And then you had Odell. You know, Odell was, you know, they was, they was loving him in the town. You know what I'm saying? He was really good, really skilled, talented. And then we just had a lot of guys that was good. You know what I mean? We right. had nobody who was great. They were really good. Like a lot of old Matt Essien, Chris Workman, Marquise Warfield. Mm. Montez Slater, okay. he had a name. Like Montez had a good name. But we had a lot of guys that was good, but they hadn't really knocked that fence down yet. Okay. And it was crazy. A lot of people don't know this, but Lawrence Thomas, who at Southeast now, he was a coach at – he was an assistant at Lanford. He was a freshman coach. Okay. So they announced basketball trials. I, man, I went to the Edison gym with the freshmen. <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought I had to try with the freshmen. I didn't know what was going on. And he come over there like, yo, what, what you doing? <laughs> like, right. Hey, coach, I'm trying to try for the basketball team. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, you know, it, it ain't no rule. It wasn't no rules back then, but he was calling me. Right. Like, Middle school, like you know, you know this about me. Like, what's going on? He's like, nah, man, you got, you got to go to the main gym. Yeah. <laughs> so I go to the main gym and coaching him, like, man, you late? Where you? Like, I didn't know y'all wanted me here. You right, know, right. Me and you know, me coming in, a young kid like that, man, it was rude. I, you know, I was in for rude awakening, and I had no idea, you know, how tough, you know, it was going to be going straight to that varsity level as a freshman. Like, was that a big adjustment? You can do to get you prepared for that. Okay. I always wondered that, like, just jumping straight into it, you know what I mean? I always wonder, like, how big of an adjustment that is and how quickly people learn off the play. It seemed like you learned pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, the transition seemed, you know, you, you did it flawlessly because, I mean, we went to all the games and, you know, when everybody had said Rich was going to start on varsity as a freshman, just hearing that. It wasn't a surprise. No, it right? wasn't. And then right. you're like, okay, well, definitely going to see right. that. So I kind of feel yeah. your coach when he looked at you like, what are you doing over here? You feel me? <laughs> like, yeah, you know, we yeah, even know. I mean, like, what are you doing? You know, knowing what I know now, you know what I mean? It makes sense to me. But back then, I was confused. I feel you. So That's humble, though. Up, That's real. That's humble. <laughs> right. And it took, it took a while. I mean, it took, it, took, it took some adjusting, for sure. You know, it was just way more physical. And then, you know, coming in with that name, everybody want a piece of you. Mm-hmm. you right. I mean? You don't really understand that at a young age. <laughs> Hey, this kid, you know, they, they don't want two back-to-back state titles. We coming in here thinking he about to take over. Nah, it ain't happening. Like Back-to-back? That. I didn't know that. Yeah, See, man, this is new, bro. I didn't know that. The seventh, we played up. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Back-to-back. Shout out to Coach out Sherman. More. I you know much respect to Coach Howard, and I love Coach Howard. But, he, you know, he wasn't really letting us rock out like that. Right. We played an old-school brand of basketball. As but Coach played. Sherman, though. He, he opened hey, the floodgate. Shout out to Coach Sherman. <laughs> Coach Sherman was the man. That was my guy. Yeah, he man. The floodgate. He let us all go. You know what I mean? Steve got to do his thing. And I still I remember that really day. Steve, Steve was that dude. Oh, no, man. I know. Steve, I know. Man. Trust me. Yeah. I know. I heard all about it. I, I know. <laughs> man, Steve was that dude, man. I ain't going to front. So, man, that was fun playing with them cats, man. Yeah, it was. Y'all cats was cold. So you get to the East. You're starting as a freshman. Are you right? You start in varsity as a freshman, right? Yeah. So we get through freshman year. What I really want to get to is kind of through sophomore year, and I believe it's in your junior year. But I think we all remember that fateful, uh, that fateful night at Southeast High School. Oh man, that's the year that uh, Southeast the ran the city. But you, it was y'all. I remember sitting on the front, the front so we floor. Was in the front row. Yes. Yep. And Nolan Richardson was there. Yep. Bill Self was there. It was at Southeast. Right. We're talking about oh, the Dre yeah, game. Yeah. yeah. That was the that was that fateful night. Yeah. Yeah. I remember because I remember talking to Steve. I mean, you know, everybody <laughs> went home. That's when you would go. You would get fresh right. to go to the game. Oh, you had to. You had to be. Had so I'm to. like, we bought. You know, we here. They they're like, oh, Nolan Richardson here to see Dre. This that and the third. We hype. You know, Steve, my cousin. Yes. So I'm like, this is about to be crazy. And then I look up and it's like y'all was up like thirty points. Nah, the they morning. wasn't up thirty. They was up fifty at half. <laughs> they wasn't up thirty, bro. And I'm gonna tell you, I remember this because for everybody who doesn't know out there, Southeast and Landfair have always been rivals. So this is the big game every year. You feel right. me? They came to the East. We was talking so crazy, yeah, so bro. Up. Because before this, I don't know if y'all remember. Um, I know he remember. 
Do y'all remember they had the website? It was like Hoop Phenoms or something like that, mm-hmm. and it showed all everybody ranked the state. Rich was always up there. He was always at the top. So every, yeah. we had, you know, what I'm saying all the guys over at Lanford, they wolf and we like we finna kill y'all, man. Forget Rich. Nobody care about no Rich, <laughs> <laughs> bruh. Man, Rich hit that. Half, he bro. hit that. He hit that. You hit a shot from half court oh, my at halftime, and I just remember turning, looking at Sean and everybody, and everybody in the crowd was just like, was "So embarrassed." How do you man. guard that? Man, you know gee, what I mean? It I'm was about, my man just, out there doing shamrocks and everything. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, I, I, I was, that man, was crazy, pissed, man. man. Cause so, I, and I remember man. vividly, Steve said. If if Dre tries to dunk on somebody, <laughs> it's gonna be John Stander, wasn't it? That's exactly. What That's he told me before the game. He said John Stander tried to block everybody, cause and Dre came through the lane, two hands, and he tried to block him, and it, it did not work out. Man, John Stander got me on a poster right now at the gym. That cut out with Dre swinging on the damn rim. <laughs> he passed that damn inbound pass right to him, and it just was like, oh, yeah, oh man, give me that. Cool. Do you remember that, that night, Rich? I remember that game vividly, man, because we had just came off the KMOA shootout. We had a tough stretch. And, uh, you know, Coach was worried about because we played Shadley Randolph in St. Louis. And uh, we played well, ended up getting that win. And, you know, guys riding that little wave. But Coach was worried about Southeast. You know, you know how talented, you know, they were over there. They, I think it's probably you, they had a lot of guys in my grade. Yeah, you know, yeah. Marcus yep. Hurst, Steve yep. High, yep. Tough Standard, high, shit, yeah. Wheat, yeah. Wheatley. You know what yeah. I mean? They had a lot of guys in my grade. So, you know, I knew all those guys really well. They, we needed to understand, like, man, these dudes talented. And, yeah, Southeast Lanford, is a lot of back and forth with the chatter. And uh, before the game, I just remember Dre playing. Like, all Dre ever did was play in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> and Coach come in there, and he – Ripping into us, you know, he getting after us because this dude playing, and you know, at the time we was all laughing before the game. The coach like, man, y'all, y'all keep playing, they go bust y'all heads. And y'all done did all this work up to this and let this happen. Y'all keep playing, and we got serious after that. And, you know, it was, we was led by Dre, man. Dre came out, he was spectacular, man. I think he got a couple easy ones. He might have hit a three early in the game, and. No, he was spectacular, man. That dude, you know, he he was special. Part of the thing I want to know: what it, what can I get your can I get your story on what happened, sir? You was on this day because I was, was in the stands. I, yeah. I don't. I was just want to know what happened. I mean, <laughs> like I said, mm-hmm. it's on paper. Okay, you think one thing until you in front of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because honestly. We hadn't seen that from Dre right, yet. Right, right, yeah, yeah. broke That was an explosion. Yeah. I'm glad we you... think it. That was about to be Nico's muscling us, right. right? But nah, Dre came out swinging them bows and them shoulders. I'm glad. It was nasty. I'm glad you said that because I don't. I don't. The other thing, no, no disrespect to Dre at all. He, this man has accomplished more than anybody out of our city. But at that time, I don't think people realize Dre wasn't the worry. That everybody was worried about at Landfair. Everybody right. was worried about my man. We was gonna run Trigon too. Right. Rich. Right. That's <laughs> that was he was the problem. Right. We had saw in high school. That one game a team did that and you just stayed in the back court. And mm-hmm. that was our plan. <laughs> but he came out hot and it was just like Bro. Switch Bro. it up. Uh, man, I would tell you with, with Dre, man, Dre like it was crazy because you know, I I felt all along, even my freshman year when he was a sophomore, he should have played varsity. Like they had him on JV, and he had about thirty at halftime. He was dunking on people. But like I said, we had a lot of talent. But then he found his way towards the end of the year on varsity. And if people don't remember he started his whole junior year, played the point. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I and I just remember after we played AAU together, and he came back, he had just got MVP at nationals. He was nat- MVP at Nationals in Orlando. And he came back. He came straight to my house. He was like, man, I'm getting conference player of the year this year. Wow. I was like, hey, great. If you get conference player of the year, we going to state. Cause I'm going to be right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be right there with you. I want you to get it. You know what I mean? Like, 
and he struggled the first two games. We was at the Decatur Thanksgiving tournament. I'll never forget. He put so much pressure on himself. I think first game he had like 14. Second game he had like 17. After that championship game, he had like 35. He never looked back. Whoa. He never looked back after that. Man, he was special that whole year, man. Yeah. He was unbelievable. So that right. night, that night, that night, something you probably won't remember, but it was the first interaction I ever really had with you. After the night, you y'all killed us by fifty in Southeast, and I remember me. I remember walking by you upstairs afterwards, like on the deck, and I was walking by him, and I said, "Hey, Rich, man, y'all came out like y'all was killing, bro." And my man looked at me and was like. Yeah, that's because y'all fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, I'm like... Because that's a real rivalry. I'm like, right. man, fuck this dude, bro. You know what I mean? But, but looking back, though, bro, you got to have that killer instinct, bro. Like, I don't, we you not friends, bro. Right. You on the other team. You feel me? Like, right. you, you supporting the mother cats. That's all it is. That's real, that's right. But, but I respect because it. Because me and that nigga in TP was friends. Right. So we came with that negative energy the whole time. Right. <laughs> no, but I, I definitely shout out to my nigga TP. TP. Yeah, TP. No, but uh, definitely, bro. That that was uh, that was that was good, man. And so, okay, so O two, you said y'all go to state, y'all. Who did y'all play in state? Sean Livingston and them? <clears throat> no, so Sean was at Sean was at Richwoods. Mm-hmm. They didn't make it. They they actually got knocked out by Pekin. Uh, who we beat in the super sections? Pekin was loaded. They had like six D one kids. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Pekin was always tough. Yeah. So we played Thornwood. They they really had just graduated. Eddie Eddie Curry. Yeah. Eddie uh, Curry went Melvin to the Bulls. Buckley. Yeah. Melvin Buckley played at Purdue. Uh, they had another kid. He played at Indiana State, but he ended up being really good and played pro a little bit overseas. I forget his name. Uh, then they had Pierre Thomas. He he, he played Division One as well. He's like six five wing. Yeah. Um, but we we got we got after them pretty good. And then we played, uh, man, we played played a team from Southern Illinois. Uh, they always pretty good. I can't I can't remember the name of them. They had they had like three D one kids. They best kid was a sophomore at the time, and he ended up playing at Carbondale. Uh, but I think we beat them in overtime. And then, you know, back then, you played two games on that last day. So we, we only played five guys, six, maybe, you know, if somebody got in foul throw. And uh, it's kind of like our Washington team. We right. never came out. <laughs> so, you know, coming back with that second game, man, I mean, I think it just took us, a, you know, it took us a while to get going. We, we played Westinghouse earlier in the year. We beat them pretty good. Um, but we just got off to a slow start at that state game, man, and they were good. I mean, they were loaded too. They had like three, four D one kids. That's still a big uh, deal, boy. Like yeah. you know what I mean, state championship game. That's still sure. huge, bro. Regardless, win or lose. Yeah, for sure. <coughs> so, I mean, so you know, one of the time, things you don't really realize it. Like at the time, you don't really realize how big that is. But you just hooping, right? You know what I mean. You don't right. really realize what you could have accomplished. Making history, it's crazy. Right. Looking back, yeah, like looking back, it's like man. You know, we we need a little bit more sense of, sense of urgency. Right, right, right. True, true. So your your senior year, um, kind of want to understand what made you the decision to go to Illinois. Like, who was coming after you? If you didn't go to Illinois, what school did you go to? You had a great visit. You was like, you know, this is kind of it for me. What was the decision with Illinois? Was it like Bill Self or, you know, what went into that? Man, that was it was tough. It was tough. You know, I think a couple of things stood out to me with Coach Self because that's one of the that's probably the main reason why I chose Illinois was Coach Self. Was uh, my sophomore year going into my junior year, I went to Nike camp, and uh, you know, at Nike camp every day we had to start workouts at eight a.m. And there was one coach in the stands, and that was Coach Self. He had a broken leg too. Um, you know, and back then, wasn't no rule. Like, wasn't no rules. You ain't have to, as a coach, you didn't have to go sit in the section and have no contact with people. Like, you could walk straight up to anybody you wanted, talk to them, you know, rub, show, whatever you wanted to do, <laughs> you could do it. And, you know, at 8 a.m., when I walk in there, I see Coach Self, and he on his crutches, and he he get over to me, and he's like, man, I'm here to see you, man, nobody else. You know, so that stood wow. out to me. Mm. 
Um, and then, you know, one one day after I was walking home, I stayed like two blocks from there. We, I was walking home with a couple of my buddies and it was this black SUV like creeping behind <laughs> So I'm like, man, like, what is going on, Boy, man? Like, boys in the hood type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we steady looking back. And uh, he's just steady for like five minutes, man. Like just creeping, creeping behind us. And all of a sudden, he just come up and it's Coach Self. Like he's just on a random day. You know, he just popped in to say what's up to me. That's Can't crazy. talk to my people. And then, you know, he come to my house, man. And he met my brothers and sisters once. Remembered all their names. Remember wow. my cousin's name? Mm. Like, he remembered everything. So, you know, just a couple things like that stood out to me with him, man. And I just thought he was real. He was genuine. And, you know, he wanted the best for me and my future. And, you know what I mean? That's dope, to be bro. successful after basketball, man. I think, was it you any, know, all those things played a part in it. Was it any other schools that was up there, like, close? Man, it was a lot of schools that was intriguing. Man. Uh, so, my final five ended up being... Uh, Louisville, when they had Patino, Damn. who we ended up playing at the in the Final Four uh, in 05. And then I had Cincinnati with Bob Huggins. If I didn't go to Illinois, I probably would have went to Cincinnati. Uh, Bob Huggins, man, they worked. You know, they was always at the gym. They was always visible. And, man, I just loved this program. I loved that tough. You know, they was always talented. Yeah, right. They were yeah. tough, too, like. Yeah. Nigga, we like look, we gonna out tough y'all, but we talented too. Like yeah. whatever y'all wanna do, we with it. And that's how he talked to me. You know what I mean? I could relate to that. You know, growing up in the environment we, you know, grew up in. Like, right. I could relate to how he was talking to me. Right. Like, man, I don't, I'm really feeling how you know how you feel. Right. That's, <laughs> yeah. how I, that's how I grew up. Right, right. You know what I mean? Then at the time they had Steve Logan who, you know, was just unbelievable college basketball player, man. And I just saw myself you know, kind of fitting in a role that he played. And then I had UConn, who UConn. Man, was, these are some oh, legendary man. schools, bro. That's crazy. Hold on, man. Let me yeah, let me break yeah. this down to y'all real quick. Okay. Because I remember this. Rich probably remember this, this too. I want to say this was at the end of our eighth grade year. The Slam Magazine. Slam Magazine. He was on the Slam Magazine? Bruh. Nah. The only person above Rich was LeBron James. Shut bro. up playing, bro. Oh, God. Stop my, playing. My freshman year, we was young. We was yep. Young. Slam mm. magazine under LeBron, bro. The only person. I don't think people realize, like, my man really been a winner since since, since he started hooping, bro. Crazy. That's bro. crazy. That's, a real problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's really crazy, bro. I didn't know that. I never knew that. I remember the Slam magazine, too, but I never paid attention that close. Because remember, we took it to school. We was all talking about like, like, great. Only person that was hired in bro was LeBron. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, man. But you know, you live and you learn with that stuff. I think, you know, with me being a coach now, man, all that stuff has prepared me to deal with the kids that I deal with now. You know what I mean? Because I done been in every situation as a as a hooper. You know what I mean? I done been that guy that they look at you like, go get thirty for us, take us here. You know what I mean? Right. I done been that guy who had to wait his turn. You know what I mean? Then I'd have been the guy. Yeah, you got you you coming in six seven man, but you got to be effective when you come in. You have mm. to. That's tough. You know what I mean. Then I went back to a starter. You know what I mean? Be, to being the guy that hey, we need you every night, man. That's so, dope, bro. So you, you so know, you I, you get the you get to you get to Illini, and you talking about you got D Brown, Darren Williams, Darren Williams, Luther Head. Nah, everybody. I don't think people realize these is all people that went to the NBA, bro. Right. Like you you. Yeah. You really in a, in a crowd full of killers, bro, and y'all and y'all made a run. Yeah, yeah so we, man. it was magical. Then the the year y'all went to the national championship, played against UNC. We you played in what St. Louis? Yeah, it was in St. How Louis. How crazy was that, bro? Playing in St. Louis man, in the national championship. Like like I like I always say, man. Like even from the middle school going to high school to the state run to the final four run, like you don't realize how big it is because, you know, back then we didn't have Twitter and Instagram, you know what I mean? So right. you don't really realize how big it is on the outside. Cause we just so boxed in and we focused on this goal right here. You know what I mean? So that's all we see is this goal that coach keep putting in front of us every day. 
we we don't see what's going on outside. And then, you know, you get to the hotel and you pull up around front <laughs> and it's about 2,000 people out there. So we got to pull around to the back. Now they chasing our bus. Wow. You know I mean? We got to go down into the basement in the bus. Like, wow. Ride up on the service elevator to our floor. Rock stars. Like, we, we didn't really realize how big it was until we actually got to St. Louis. And then you go to the practice at the Final Four, it was like 50,000 people in there. Like, it was unbelievable. I had never practice. seen nothing like that. At the I practice. never seen nothing like that practice, man. That practice was crazy. All right, so I got a question. Who's the top dog on that team? Mm. I think it was D-Will. It was definitely D-Will. It was definitely D-Will. I think you know, D. Brown, he was the face because, you know, of his character and his energy. And from you know Illinois. I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, with that alone, you know, I think he deserved to be the face. And he was good, too. Like, he was, he was good. A base? Yeah. Luther, he was just more of a silent assassin. He was probably our best offensive player, but he wasn't our best all-around player. I think our best all-around player, player, player was D. Will. And, you know, he was our leader. You know what I mean? He was our leader. Sometimes he, you know, he speak up, but sometimes it was just, look, y'all come get on my back and let me show y'all how this done. I'm get 15, <laughs> nine assists, eight rebounds. I'm guarding the best player every night, mm -hmm. no matter what position it is. You know what I mean? And we're going to get this thing done together. And I think the biggest thing with him, man, is he was just so unselfish. And mm -hmm. I thought it rubbed up, it rubbed down the ladder you know what i mean everybody else was just like look man we just trying to get this thing done man we don't care who night it is <laughs> you know what I mean? and i think when you got that i mean special things bound to happen yeah that was a special team it was bro. i mean that, that's they haven't had a team close to that not even no uh -uh. ain't no way nah and i and i like the direction that the program's going in now with io and the big man i mean they got some they got some good players. Look like he got some good talent coming in, but that team was special, man. I mean that that little bounce crossover that Darren used to put on people, yeah, yeah. man. The I mean, that crazy. Stuff, yeah, 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 man. Like he was tough. Deceptive. But it, when we like our practices was brutal. Like we used to practice for three and a half, four hours. Like I said, he wasn't the hardest person to guard. The hardest person to guard was Luther. By really, Luther close. had because Luther. He, he ran a mile in 450 and wasn't sweating. Wow. Yeah, like he, uh, he don't get tight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, chasing that dude around. Then he had handles. He could shoot it. He was athletic. You know, guarding him every day. And then you go to the games. It's, you know, it's different. They give you a different type of confidence. You right. know what I mean? Like, right. fucking who with this cat? Like, man, y'all in trouble. So you on a level where you going to a national championship. You playing against people like Raymond Felton. Rashad McCants, Sean, Sean May was, was on, on that team. team. Yeah. Who else was on that team? Was Marvin Williams on that Marvin team? Marvin Williams, Williams was on that team. Freshman, right? Yep. So you you freshman. playing against people like that all year? You did y'all and who y'all went to Louis? Y'all went through Louisville that year. Yeah, they had Francisco Garcia. Yeah. France, he was a killer. A yeah. He was a killer. Yeah. Bro, so who who was the the one dude that you was just like he just. What'd you say? Bust your ass? Yeah, who who was the yeah. first person when you got to Illinois that y'all played against, whether it be was on the scouting report, wasn't on the scouting report, but you got out there and you was like, man, this dude is Damn. different. I'm going to tell y'all who that was. Um, before we got to him, we, we had a couple guys that gave us some work. But at Illinois, by far, it was Devin Harris. Mm, Devin Harris. Really? Wisconsin. Yeah. Devin Harris was at Wisconsin. And if if y'all got time to go back and look at the numbers, just one day when you bought we had the pandemic, <laughs> ain't nothing going on. When you got time to go back and look at them box scores, <laughs> man, do that from 03. When we played Wisconsin at Wisconsin, he had 35. I think he missed three or four shots. And I just remember, you know, being on the bench at a point in time, like, Yo, this dude really special. Like, I had never really seen nothing like that, you know, at, at that point in time. Like, right? now I didn't see some killers now, but like the efficiency he was doing it with, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't see dudes put on performances 
but they weren't super efficient with it, with their movements, you know what I mean, with the amount of energy they spend, and then just making shots, making difficult shots, making easy shots, you know what I mean, getting to the free throw line, post, now you scoring it every, every way, and then he ran by our bench, and he was calling his names, like, and he was talking crazy. Oh. So, when I when I saw that, I'm like, yo, this is this is serious. This is serious. Wow. And the first we played him three times. The first game he had 35. The second game we beat him at our place. He had 19, and we doubled him every time he touched the ball. <laughs> and, then, I, and I don't know, y'all probably don't know this, but we we wore orange at home all the time, and they was red on the road. Uh huh. So they they wore red, we wore orange. It was a big thing about wow. that. <laughs> they tr- yeah, they tried to get us in trouble with that. And then we played him for the conference title uh, in the tournament. And he had 39. He, mm. he gave us the work. Like, gave us the work. And he was special, man. He was special. I played against some good dudes. Brandon Roy probably up there, too. Uh, Forgot about Brandon Devin Roy. Harris by far. By far, Devin Harris. Devin Harris, man. I think he ended up going four or five in the draft. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Who was it? Uh, was it the Mavs? I think Dallas drafted him. There was, it, yeah, was it Dallas, Dallas that drafted him? Dallas drafted him. Nope. That's crazy. Cold. I, for, I mean, I, yeah, you're right. I remember him going crazy in some of those Big Ten tournament games. He was just so quick with the ball. You know, either he, way, he just was. The, the crazy thing is, you know what he's going to He's going to go right. Every time, <laughs> you can't, can't stop, stop it. it. Like, he gonna either shoot it or he gonna drive right. it. Stop picking your poison. And he, but it was not missing. Then we put D on him because D was quick. He was posting him up, <laughs> doing all this. Like, this kid's special, man. Like, whoever this dude is, I think I said it out loud one time. And the coach looked at me, pushed me like, "Hey, man, shut up." <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah, I remember. By, by far, Devin Harris, man. You ain't even close. I remember going to that that year. Y'all went to the championship. <clears throat> My job gave us tickets, and we went up there, and it was like one of y'all exhibition games. And uh, I never seen somebody score that many fast break points in real life. Like <laughs> D would get the ball, oh, and, was and people would be at half court, and he just ran past him. Was, I was bro. just like, "This is crazy." Y'all beat him by like. 40 some points, yeah. but I just was like, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. he had blind. I mean, you, you get to that level though, you know, and y'all know now, hey, you, it was big when I was coming, it was big when we was coming up, you know what I mean? So I had seen all those dudes already before, you know, we already mm-hmm. know, know each other, you know, by that point. But I mean, you know, guys go on to their different spots, and back then it wasn't that buddy buddy stuff, like, you know, if. If you went to like Dre, Dre went to Arizona. I went to Illinois. Like we beat them to go to the Final Four. I wasn't. I was woofing that Dre. Like, you know, <laughs> right. Even you know Dre was in the is. league. I was woofing it. Like man, we about to bust their heads tomorrow. Right. Like, you know what I mean? He texting his coaches. His coaches walk in because they probably be for us. And we walk on the floor. Lou Dostin come over to me because he, you know, he came up to the school a lot. He like, man, Dre sent me a message, told me we better beat y'all because you been talking crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah, we been talking crazy all week. Y'all know what time it is. I mean, they was loaded too. Yeah, it's been some yeah. good talent that's came through Arizona. That's the thing, like I said, yeah. man, to, cool. to, 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 for somebody, you got a resume, bro, because we talking about seventh, eighth grade, back to back. We go, we go to high school, we go to state. We graduate high school, we go to college, we go to the national championship. Like, you you a bona fide winner, bro. One of nobody the best players in Illinois healing history. He oh, is. Yeah. yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. One random question. I know you guys get kind of like crazy swag bags at these big games, like a national championship. You might come in the locker room and you got a, some AirPods or something now. Was it anything when you went in there, like the swag bag that you remember, like, oh, man, this is crazy. <laughs> At the final four, they, they gave us they didn't give us nothing crazy. Uh the Big Ten gave us like camcorders. Uh we had the PSPs one year. Oh, they gave us those. We, one year we had the uh little iPads. It, uh, not the iPads, the uh I- air you know, it's where you put your music on. Right. Uh, what, what was it called? iPod. iPod? Was it iPod? It's yeah, old as hell right now. Yeah. Man, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> you gave hey, me a cassette hey. player back in 82. You know hell yeah. Hey, there's so many gadgets. So one year they gave us that, but then they always gave us, like, T-shirts, blankets, like, all type of stuff, man. All type of shorts, jogging stuff, like. 
you know, they they took care of us, man. Big Ten took care of us. I can only imagine what they get now. They get now, yeah. <laughs> That's dope, man. You know I okay, so the other thing I don't think people realize once you once you you know what I'm saying we talking about present, so you at Mobley, and I don't think people understand it's one of the most winningest programs in D2 history, bro. Yeah. And and I think you was a part of one of the years that y'all 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 made a huge run, right or wrong? Well, here here uh, when so I'm at a JUCO. This JUCO right here. Okay. So I don't know if y'all remember, but Eddie Smith played. EJ played here. Yes, sir. EJ, oh, okay. Did EJ go there? Of the year okay. Here. Wow. We got him on the schedule. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he was national player of the year from here, so he came back this year. But but yeah. So I'm in a different situation now. Like like you said, I was at the D2 ranks for five years. I was at UIS for two. Okay. And then I was at Minot State for three up in North Dakota. And everywhere I went, man, I feel like I've left my my print on a program. You know what I mean? Like UIS, we accomplished, accomplished some first. Uh, made it to the conference tournament. You know what I mean? We, we didn't get to win a game, but we made it to the tournament. They had never did that before as a D2 team. And then we tied for most wins in program history, had all conference guys, all that. And then I go up to North Dakota, you know, we, man, blew it out the water. We had the first conference game at home ever in program history. Wow. Uh, we had the player of the year one year. We had two first team guys, never been done. Had all American, never been done. Wow. Uh, we won 20 some games, never been done. You know what I mean? So you now I feel like I definitely left my imprint on that program. And then coming here, you know, to a situation where, you know, this place is special, man. It's special. You got guys like Mitch Richmond play here. Like I said, EJ play here. Gerald Wilkins play here. And you got former NBA guys that come back. And then you got a, a program where, you know, it's second nationally and wins at, in the national tournament. So we expected to go to the tournament every year. You know, we expected to be great every year. We expected to get all the top recruits in every year. <laughs> so it's a different vibe for me coming around you know, this next year to a point where I got to keep this thing going now. You know, we ain't, you know, trying to look, we ain't looking up, you know, trying to reach somebody else. You know what I mean? We looking down now, trying to stay where we at. I feel that. Right. right. You know, I, I, I love this challenge because I'm with a boss now, man. He's a real leader. And, you know, I feel like, you know, he invested in my future. You know what I'm saying? Because we all got goals, you know, at the end of the day. But <clears throat> like I tell everybody I talk to now, man, I'm blessed to be where I'm at now. You know, being with a legend. Coach just went in the Hall of Fame a couple years ago. And, man, it, it, he A1, man. Ain't nobody like him. He, he is who he is for a reason. Man. Man. Uh, like I, man, I had a, a couple opportunities to leave. I'm like, nah. nah I'm, I'm back here, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stay here, man. Get some good kids and try to see, you know, what we can do. Because, you know, all the wins they've had here, they've never won a national, t- national title. So. You know, that's what I'm trying that's to do real. here. If I could do that here, you know, who, who knows what could happen for the future. That's right. Oh, yeah. Speaking sure. of Hall of Fame, you just got inducted into Illinois Sports Hall I of saw Fame. saw that. You know what I'm saying? Big salute on that. That's serious, man. Yeah, that, bro. Salute, bro. Yeah, man. That's serious. Yeah, that was big, man. I, you know, see, seeing all those people, it was a lot of people over there, man. You know, seeing all those people in. Some of the people older than you, people you heard about, you know, some of them younger than you, some of them your age. You know, some of them, I went in with Vic Chukudebe, you know, like a big bro to me. You know, he played at Lanford, graduated in 96. Uh, so, go, you know, going in the Hall of Fame, seeing all those people, man, just reunite, building new network and, you know, doing all that stuff, man, it's something that I can't even put into words, really. You know what I mean? I'm just blessed. And, you know, now I'm just trying to give back, man. I'm just trying to give back. Nice build my knowledge into the youth, man. Like, you know, that's the biggest thing for me right now, man. I'm just trying to give back, make sure, you know what I mean, that we keep guys in Springfield on the right path, man. Right. I you know, that, try bro. to build with the kids that I coach, you know, wherever stop them at, make sure they understand what's really going on once that ball stop bouncing. That's real, yeah, man. What's next? That's real. Yeah, for sure. You ain't, you, ha- you haven't had any of your, uh, any of your players, you know, have to make you lace the shoes back up. I probably every was, day, man. every day. Oh, they call because you out? Every day. Every day. <laughs> every Everywhere I've been. But you know what? I'm still, like, I ain't going to never change, man. You know, that's just how we right. raise. It's you know like you handle it. Like, mm-hmm. 
I still talk crazy. <laughs> I, talk, I talk crazy to kids that ain't even committed to me. You know, just to see where they at. Just to see if, you know, I want them here. Right. right. You know what I mean? Because right. if you can't talk, take me talking crazy to you can't as a it. group, like, yeah. you definitely ain't going to be able to come in here and be special. I feel you, bro. Right. And you ain't got that mindset. You know what I mean? So, I oh, every day, though, every day. I feel yeah, it's, it's a kid every day, man. That's, so with all the <clears throat> last dance stuff that's going on and the Jordan stuff that's going on, I think it'd be appropriate to ask the question. So we like to do a little thing on our podcast called Buy, Sell, Trade. So we asking you, Rich McBride, Buy, Sell, Trade, the stock of these three players at the height of their careers, Jordan, Kobe, LeBron. We, we not making it easy. We not bro. Make it easy. We no, we're not right. getting out of this one. Nah, either, we, we, we gotta know. You gotta you gotta yeah, answer that one. Yeah. That's all. Well, man, just my two cents on that whole deal right there. We listening. If we just talking about pure basketball, you know what I mean? You just talking about pure hoop. Because y'all know LeBron was in my class, you know what I mean? Okay. In our class. Okay. You know, I, I seen Brian from sophomore year to what he is now, you know, the ex- expectations he had on him and the way he's exceeded him. Like, he didn't exceed his expectations. Man. True, which was hard. So, just off pure basketball, you know what I mean? Bron, probably the best all-around player we've seen. Okay. Now, in terms of, like, the greatest, and you throw in mindset and will to win and commit, man, like, I'm, I'm going to probably buy Mike. I'm gonna probably trade Kobe. Oh, it's gonna be a lot of mad people out there, rich. But here's the thing: like, look, <laughs> the three best basketball players we've ever watched on TV. No lie, you, know you, you like, couldn't win that. You couldn't win yeah, it. It don't matter yeah, what you said; no you're not gonna win. There's gonna be people who, right? Like Bron. It's gonna be people who like you Kobe. Can't win, right? So, okay, I, I respect what Bron's done, man, because I played against Bron as a sophomore. He played on my team. In a high school all star game, so I, I've been seeing him, you know mm. what I mean, and see what he is now. You know, he didn't exceed the expectations, man. He uh, he got so much he hate, did. For real. He you did, know what I mean? but buddy, really cold. He really that deal, man. So, okay, let's let's let, let's let's ask you this then: if you had to do it, you had to do a starting five out of Springfield, Illinois history. Any any kid. Who is the, who was the starting five you rolling with? Including yourself. Including yourself. If you include yourself in the top five, that's more than fair. Out of any school? Out of Listen, any, school. any school. Just in Springfield. Ooh, it's got to be Springfield, Illinois. I just want to put the heat on you, bro. That's I, it. I'm going to take myself out the equation. Okay. 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 Well, that's fair enough. I'm going to go Ed for show. I'm going to go Ed for show. I'm going to go Dre for show. Okay. Uh, so, so we got EJ and Dre so far, right? Ed. Ed, okay, Ed okay, Ed, Ed Horton, Horton, Ed Horton. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm go Ed, I'm going to go Dre. Whew. I'm going to go Tyrone. Ty, Ty Tyrone, Tyrone Lee. Lee? That's cuz. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just in high school alone. High school. High school. I'm going to go Tyrone Lee. I'm gonna go Ed Dre. Pressure, Man, yeah. pressure. Tough. It's tough. Pressure. This is tough. Yeah. Probably Steve Dixon. That's a good mm-hmm. one. Shout out to Steve. Steve Dixon was a killer. He was a real dog. Killer. Talk crazy to, killer, to this boy. day. And then I'll probably go Jeff Walker. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm. That's tough. That's a That's tough a lineup, five, bro. I mean, I don't think people realize how much good talent actually came, you know, from our city. When you sit back and look and we have these kind of conversations and you just, you know, the people we've seen, the people we didn't see, it's so it's, much talent it's here. It's nuts. So it's much nuts. talent yeah. here. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. You, you talk about any school, man, you know, I don't think people really realize how good Tyrone Lee was. Tyrone Lee was, he was a monster. You know what I mean? And, now, I played against them cats growing up. You know, I ain't never going to, you know, not include him in right. this equation. Right. He was a monster. Yeah. And then you got guys like KG. Like, you can throw KG in there. I forgot you know, about him. He special. Yeah. Man, I forgot about him. Yeah. state tourney. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I really want to – one of your coaches had said that you was actually like the – 
you was the best player he had ever seen. Matter of fact, I believe it was Coach Self said you was you was the best player he had ever seen next to KG. Yeah. See that's 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 big words, that's bro. Tough, like man. that's a that's a MVP you talk oh, about. Oh yeah. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. The league, high bro. High school coach that said that. Was it a high school uh, coach? Coach Pat. Yeah, coach, coach, coach Pat. Said. That's crazy, bro. Regardless of who said it, like that's nuts, bro. Yeah. That's tough. He was man. he was just gassing me up. He man. said gas. <laughs> I mean, I love Coach Pat. You know what I mean? And we we did some great things together, man. But to say that, you know, I didn't seen a lot a lot of good dudes that. You know, I was just looking at it like, man, I could probably get a couple buckets. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Trying to line up with them cats, and it ain't happening. That's tough, man. All right, so what's Richard McBride doing today? Man, now with all this stuff going on, man, it's it's kind of light. You know what I mean? We we actually finishing up our recruiting class, so that's probably t- uh, top priority on my list right now. Uh, just staying in contact with recruits, uh, making sure we stand in contact with the guys that we got leaving, uh, staying in contact with the guys we got moving on to probably different JUCOs or different four-year schools, and then the guys we got coming in, you know what I mean? So doing all that, juggling all that, trying to you know make a schedule for that. And then, you know, I got a 12-year-old son, so we play a lot of Fortnite. I play Fortnite <laughs> a lot. And, I know, you know about I'm that. I'm in that joint, so yeah. we, we love banging my head with punk shotguns and all that. So I play that a lot. And then, you know, I spend time with my fiance, man. I'm about to get married in a couple months. So oh, man. Congratulations, bro. Gang, gang. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Congratulations, man. Yeah, man. Look, bro, I definitely, we definitely appreciate sure. you, you 100% fooling time with for us, this. bro. I, I don't, like, again, I don't know if people understand this enough. This man is literally a Springfield legend, bro. Living like, legend in he the really state is. of Illinois. He's been a winner yeah. since oh, he yeah. started. Oh, He's yeah. still winning, and he ain't even playing no more. So right. that, that says a lot. So, for sure. bro, I appreciate really appreciate you appreciate coming, it. man, and it's all all love to you, bro. And, and I, I pray for you and your family, and you go as high as the sky go, bro. Sure. Man, appreciate that, man. Appreciate yeah, man, I appreciate love. you. Hey, Rich, after this, send me your address, bro. I got a gift for you. All right, bet. Salute, yes, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Rich. All right, fellas. Love, man. Love, right, bro. Take care.